The purpose of this screencast is to help support your efforts to create a keyword search list. We are now entering the G or gathering information phase of the research process and it starts with creating a keyword search for where we're going to get started on the internet. So purpose. The purpose of this exercise is to develop a reliable list of keywords to conduct a search for sources. And that's online. Learnings. Students will be able to develop a robust list of words and phrases for searching online for sources. Directions. Students will watch this think aloud that you're watching now of their teacher developing a keyword search and then you will use a Google Doc that you will find on Google Classroom to develop your own keywords. I also want to mention that this question generator really comes in handy. All your questions and big questions on here to look back at this and see what keywords you can pull out of this. Because from that initial reading, um, from that initial reading, you might have some questions here. You also might want to look back at that first reading you did. Here's the one I did on MNOpedia, and the questions that I developed here is going to trigger my memory to think of keywords um, and things that uh, I may want to search further. So, you want to use the resources that you have. On the website, here is the keyword search. It's embedded and you can open it from here or Google Classroom has the version you will use. You can see you're just going to put your topic and then we'll jump to the larger version here. Topic goes here and then directions. You will work with your partner to develop a list of keywords for searching online for sources. List words that will help you fully explore the topic. So you really want to start thinking outside the box. Little words that can go together. Refer to their question organizer to help come up with keywords. So, you want to use that question organizer like I just showed you to come up with the words. So for my first topic, or first question, I start pretty simple. Dred Scott biography. So I'm going to do a keyword search on that and see what I can find. And I may find a lot of sites here. And some are going to be useful and reliable, some are not. The next one is Dred Scott court case. Again, pretty broad. I'm focusing on the case. It might give me information not so much about Scott's life, but more about the court case, um, what led up to it, its impacts. Next one is, oops, I didn't get all of it, is Dred Scott and Fort Snelling. And this links Dred Scott to Minnesota and what happened there at Fort Snelling. At the time, it was called Wisconsin Territory. But this is what linked Dred Scott to Minnesota and actually makes him a topic that we can study. I may want to just search the court case itself, Scott versus Sanford. And knowing that when I get in there, you're going to find some really technical websites. So I'll teach you some other tricks for making it easier for readers at the sixth grade level. Um, I want to know about the times in which Scott lived. So Dred Scott in Civil War. This might tell me a little bit about the time. It's also going to tell me how his court case and his life impacted the start of the Civil War. Same with this, is causes the Civil War in Dred Scott. So that goes even deeper than just that. And that might bring up some more pointed websites about that. Um, I know I asked some questions and actually found out that the abolitionist movement in Minnesota really got its spark from the Dred Scott case. And so I want to look more into that. So Dred Scott case, Minnesota abolitionist movement, this will tie me to that. I want you to notice that I'm using the word and a lot to link things together. Searches love the word and because it just links terms together. So when it searches these words out, it puts them together and finds sites where they occur together.
And daily life of an enslaved person. Um, that's the term now. Unfortunately, you might have more luck if you use daily life of a slave, but enslaved person kind of detaches the act, you know, the, the idea of being a slave from the person. They're a person in a state of enslavement, but you might have more luck just with the word slave. And I want to find that out because, well, he was an enslaved person, Dred Scott, and what did he do that enslaved people typically had to do? What was their life like? And the hardships and challenges and even victories that they may have encountered in their lives. Dred Scott case and impact. So I could see the impact. This might find some websites pointed towards the impact of his case on the country. And then antebellum period. This is where when Dred Scott lived. This is the time frame that he lived in. It's called the antebellum period. And I might find out, find out more about what life was like around Dred Scott. So this is really important. Um, so here I have a pretty good place to start. But again, these are all just starters. You're going to, as you get into the process, you'll start developing more pointed keyword searches. So, and of course, I forgot to put my topic, Dred Scott. So this finishes the keyword search. And you should end this. This will end now, and then you want to start your own keyword search.